So we have six very happy people here today who um, are going to get to talk about the 20 year anniversary of the Lion King film and record release. And now we have the added fun of having Hans's music added for this new legacy collection where all the music from the film is going to be in, which is awesome. And we have Mark Mancina, music producer, Roger Hours, director, Don Hahn, producer, Rob Minkoff, director, Hans Zimmer, composer, and I'm Chris Montan from Disney Music. And we're going to talk about all things Lion King. For me, the whole experience really was that I came to it with some doubt. And it, it really was, could I serve this movie? Yeah. Because I, I had no idea. But very quickly, I sort of embraced, I, 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 I realized how incredibly smart this way of filmmaking was. Whereby, basically you end up making the movie at the end after you figure everything out on storyboard. It was a rub for a while trying to figure out how does this music kind of work with all this? Because we had been working with Howard Ashman and Alan Menken and kind of a Broadway style. And, uh, but yeah, I, I dove in then probably around the time you did and nobody wanted to work on it. Everybody was migrating towards other movies, Pocahontas, Pocahontas and things. Yeah. It was, we were definitely the B movie, if not the C movie. Mm -hmm. uh, and people were fleeing uh, Lion King f like crazy. Um, so it, what was good though is the people that were left were really dedicated to it and saw it as an opportunity and wanted to work on it. And um, yeah, so we dove in. What, what it was for us was we heard your, yeah, let's power go to the one, power of one. one. Yeah. And we were like, well, that was the thing about the music is that Elton is such an incredible songwriter and he writes melodies and, and uh, that are obviously huge. And, and, and the songs for, for Lion King were no different, but they, weren't, but they needed that kind of African thing. Yeah. And that was where we all sort of were saying, how, how are we going to do that? Because you guys were doing Aladdin and all these other movies, I thought it was really important to the first thing that people heard was that it wasn't American, that it was That's foreign, yeah. that we were yeah. going to go on a journey, yeah, yeah. That it was going to kick you into some sort of an adventure. The, the original thing that finally took me over the top, why I wanted to do it, was because I wanted to take Zoe, my daughter, to the premiere. But what was great was when you re-released in 3D, that my next generation of kids could go mm -hmm. and see it on the big screen. Yeah. And to them, it was absolutely magical. And, and it is absolutely timeless. When did Can You Feel the Love Tonight get cut? <laughs> and how did it come back? Like, it's like, you know, Over the Rainbow getting cut, which it did. It did. Well, but it was it, written yeah. before yeah. the story was really there to support it. I guess we hadn't really earned it in terms of the storytelling right. at that point. And we were sort of saying, well, why do we have to have this uh, be sort of a typical love song? And we didn't cut it. We actually just had it <laughs> performed by Timon and Pumbaa. That was the idea. We, we thought, it, we, well, we enjoyed it, but uh, yeah. Elton did not. <laughs> he was not happy. No. But he was really articulate he, yes, about he was why he wasn't happy. He started talking about how, you know, the whole circle of life theme, you know, the whole thing about the generations and the kings and the queens and the producing offsprings that actually the love story is really necessary to kind of create that full circle. And um, we went, okay, we'll go back and we'll do we'll our due diligence with <laughs> yeah. this one. If you have a favorite memory or two, what would be one? Well, I was blindsided by the movie in so many different ways, but there's a profound blindsidedness that happened. You know, here I am thinking, oh, it's all fun and games, and it's, it's, a, it's a cartoon and fuzzy animals. And suddenly I'm dealing with the Mufasa death scene, and it's a child dealing with his father's death. My father died when I was very young. And suddenly I had to deal with this. I've, n I've never dealt with it. Mm. So, so that moment, that was me writing a requiem for my father. Uh, and so it, beca it became intensely personal, which is, which is really what, what all good music is supposed to be about. Do you remember, Don, when The Lion King went from being a movie to becoming The Lion King? Because I have a very distinct memory of that. Yeah, the only thing I remember, there was a preview out yes. of the valley. And we did two screenings that night. One was for a typical kind of family audience with kids and parents. It played really great, and then uh, and then we thought, well, uh, Jeffrey actually wanted to do kind of a regular movie-going audience, 18 to 24-year-olds, and so we walked out afterwards, and there's this big line of like kids with tattoos and switchblades and stuff. We thought, oh God, we're gonna, yeah, this is gonna be awful. Crowd. Yeah, it's it gonna be awful. Our audience. Yeah, it's our audience. <laughs> <laughs> and they came in, and they it, they just came unglued. They loved it. They laughed at all the jokes. I remember going out front with all you guys afterwards, going. Ah, and we didn't know what to say because yeah. it was more than just a cartoon and it wasn't just like our little king of the jungle that we started out with a couple of years earlier it was a bigger deal the, the great thing about these things that turn into these enormous successes is 
We don't know. We don't know at the time. We just, we're just trying to do our best. And we're just, you know, we're just trying to do good work. It's amazing. It's just amazing. I, I'm just so thankful that I was there and somebody said, hey, Mark, do you want to work on this? Well, I'm just so grateful that you guys wouldn't take no for an answer. Always my memory of this movie is you said yes, and then you'd figure out how to do it. It, it was like, ready, fire, aim. You know, and you would just like, go, <laughs> and then pick it up as you went. But there was an innocence about it that I think made it not think about boundaries and not think about a lot of the stuff that we get wrapped up in yeah. when we're working on a big film. Mm -hmm. It didn't seem like a big film. It just seemed like a good film. I think I think this, the single thing that everybody around this table feels is we loved this movie. You know, it was a labor of love. You know, whatever happened, by the end of it, we couldn't but love it. And every part of the process, we couldn't but love it. And the people we were working with, we had to love them because it was, you know, it was a, jour a journey which we were doing together in, in the best possible way. I want to thank everybody because this was so great and uh, I think this movie is all very, very special to all of us, obviously from everything that we talked about and I appreciate it. Thanks. Yeah.